in example three, uh, information on hamburger sales at the City Sports Arena. We're given costs and then the corresponding average number sold. So what we want to do is start off by first assuming that the relationship between price P and demand X is linear. So that means we're going to come up with some equation of the form Y equals MX plus B. We want to express P as a function of X. So meaning we want P to equal MX plus B. So since we're dealing with a linear function, we know that rate of change is constant, so we're going to have a constant slope m of y2 minus y1, or maybe what we should do is go ahead and replace that with p2 minus p1, so the difference of our y coordinates, which in this case will be p, over x2 minus x1. So in this case, um, the larger cost was the $3.10 minus the initial cost of $2.50 divided by, let's see, when we charge $3.10, there were an average of 450 hamburgers sold, minus at $2.50, 750 hamburgers sold. So with your calculator or with Wolfram Alpha, you can evaluate that to get negative 0.002. So that's going to be the slope for our linear equation. So we know that P equals negative 0.002 X plus some intercept B. So now what we can do is plug in any value that we're given for X and P. For instance, when X was 450, our price was 310. So that would absolutely work, but I just noticed in my example here, I use the other set of numbers. So just so I can stick with those numbers without having to recalculate that, I used 750 and 2.5. doesn't matter which coordinate pair we use, but this gives us 2.5 equals negative 0 0.002 times 750 plus B. So solving for that, we should get B equals 4. So our linear relationship between price and demand can be described as P equals negative 0.002x plus 4. So in some examples, we'll be given this price-demand equation. In other cases like this one, we may have to derive that from the given information. The next thing we want to do in, uh, that we want to do in part B is find the revenue function. So something to keep in mind is that revenue is always your units sold times the price that you sold them at, which in this case could be represented as X times P of X. So that function that we just came up with in part A. So in this case, our revenue function, x times p, will be x times negative 0 0.002, x plus 4. Or distributing that through, we get negative 0.002x squared plus 4x. In part c, assuming that the cost function is linear, we want to find the cost function. So the other information in this problem that we haven't used yet is in this last sentence. So the fixed costs were $1,353.60. The variable cost was 18 cents per hamburger. So that's going to give us a cost function of 1353.60 plus 0.18x. So just translating the fixed cost and the variable cost into that linear function. So now what we want to do is graph both, both the cost function and the revenue function on the same coordinate plane and find the break-even points. So in order to do that, we're going to graph both of these functions, and then we're going to solve our revenue function 
set equal to our cost function. We can actually do this in one step using Wolfram Alpha by typing solve negative 0.002x squared plus 4x, so our revenue function, equal to our cost function. So what we want to do is solve this equation where our revenue function is set equal to our cost function. So what Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha will output for us are those two results, the two x values that solve our system, as well as the graph showing those points of intersection, which are in fact those two solutions. So we get our revenue function in blue, this parabola, and we get our cost function in red, the linear function, and then we get our two values, 470 and 1440. So if we want to just identify the break-even points, that would be at 470 and 1440. But if we want to know those corresponding y-coordinates, then we can use either of the original equations. So we could, for instance, evaluate our cost function at 470. We get a value of 1,438.2. We could also evaluate it then at the other break-even point of 1,440 to get our other resulting break-even point. So we solved the two functions set equal to each other, and we came up with our break-even points, which in this case will be 470, 1,438.2, and 1,440, 1612.8 or 1,612.8. So we can take those two functions, set them equal to each other, and then plug those x values into either the cost function or the revenue function to get those corresponding y values. In part E, we're asked to find the profit function and the marginal profit function. So profit is always your revenue minus your cost. So what we need to evaluate is our revenue function minus our cost function. So coming back to Wolfram Alpha, we could type in our revenue function and then subtract and we'll put the entire cost function in parentheses to make sure we're subtracting that entire expression. So this would generate our profit function for us. So we want the profit function and then we also want the marginal profit function, which means we would want to find the derivative of our profit function, which in this case would be 3.82 minus 0.004x. So we could come up with the, re the profit and marginal profit function. Then we want to evaluate the marginal profit at 1,390. And we get a result of negative 1.74. And now we want to provide an interpretation for that result. So at a production level of 1,390, our marginal profit is negative 1.74, meaning that at a production level of 1,390 units, or in this case hamburgers, the profit is decreasing since that rate of change is negative, and it's decreasing at a rate of $1.74 per hamburger.